welcome to this course on constraint satisfaction problems. Uh, this is third in a series of courses that we have done in artificial intelligence. And we also often refer to this sometimes as constraint processing. Okay, at the very outside, let me start off by giving you the references, uh, the books for this course. So, there are two books essentially. One is a book by this name, Constraint Processing by Rena Dekter. So, I have a copy of this book here and I think we have a copy in the library. Uh, and from this we will do chapters 1 to 6 and maybe chapter 12 and maybe one or two more essentially. So, that is one textbook and the second book that we will use is my book, which is uh, uh, a first course in AI. In from which we will use chapter 9, only one chapter, but it basically covers most of the stuff that I want to cover in this course. So, that is my book here and we will use these two. Uh, by and large, we will most of the material that we cover will be from these two books essentially. Okay, so, when we talk about artificial intelligence, essentially we talk about problem solving. right? And we have already done two courses on this topic. Uh, they are available online on the NPTEL site. Uh, the first course was uh, problem solving using search. And essentially, it is a method which uses search techniques to find a solution essentially. And the second course was uh, knowledge representation and reasoning. And here the focus was on reasoning and in one course the focus was on search essentially. But in general when we talk about problem solving in AI, uh, we are interested in general purpose methods. or methods uh, which can be applied to many different problems and so on. And from that point of view, constraint satisfaction problems is a very good way of formulating problems, because it is a very uniform way of doing things. And then once you have formulated a problem as a CSP problem, so we will use the term CSP. Once you have formulated a problem as a CSP problem, then you can just take a standard CSP solver and use that to solve the problem essentially. And the nice thing about CSP is that it combines both these approaches or it allows you to combine both these approaches. So, in the sense that you can do search to find a solution and we will shortly define what do we mean by a CSP problem or you can even do reasoning of the kind that we did in for example, logical reasoning making inferences and saying that if this is true and this is true then this is true. Both kind of things can be very nicely combined in one formulation which is the CSP formulation. So, let me try to illustrate that. So, henceforth we will refer to this as CSP. Now, the basic idea of formulation here is that as a set of variables, 
that is a very high level way of looking at things that when you talk about constraint satisfaction problems, you are essentially talking about a set of variables essentially and uh, which can take values from their own domains. Okay, so, basically we are saying that each variable will have its own domain and you can get a value from its domain essentially. So, that is a very high level way of, of, of looking at things essentially. What is interesting here is that we have this notion of constraints. So, a constraint is a restriction on the combinations or on some combinations combinations of values that the variable can that the variables can take We will formalize this notion shortly as we go along essentially, but this is really the basic idea uh, behind constraint satisfaction problems is that you, you formulate the problem as a set of variables. Each variable can take values from some domain of its own and a constraint or a set of constraints, each constraint is a restriction on the combination of values that the variables can take and when you solve CSPs. It basically means assign values to all variables such that all constraints are set respected. The term we use is satisfied, we can say respected. So, you can see that the problem formulation simply says that you have a set of variables and each variable can take some values from its own domain and there are set of constraints on combinations of values and as long as you can assign values to all variables which satisfy all the constraints then you have a solution. We are not talking about what is the methodology for finding the solution. Now, clearly there are different ways of doing this. One way would be to use search, just try all combinations and just keep testing all constraints. That would be basically a search based approach, but fortunately this formulation allows us to do also reasoning essentially. Hmm. So, that is a nice thing. You can combine search and reasoning. So, I would like to illustrate that with an example, but you must keep this in mind that basically this is what a CSP is, a set of variables and a set of constraints and then you have to find values for the variables from the constraints. So, let us look at an example which is from the domain of numbers. And I want to essentially illustrate the fact that you can combine reasoning with search essentially. So, crypto arithmetic puzzles are a class of puzzles where you are given some mathematic equation, uh, but you are not given the numbers, you instead you are given placeholders for those numbers and they kind of look interesting. So, they are interesting and you what you have to do is to uh, find a solution to that. So, uh, examples of this is for example, you can say that so each of these letters, so domains for all variables is the digits, digits 
up to 9 essentially. So, which means for each of these letters, each of them is a variable, you can you need to find a value for from its domain and we are assuming in this problem that all domains are the same which is the letters from 0 to 1, 0 to 9 and then you can say and I want to add these numbers and answer should be ok. So, essentially we are giving us a addition problem, but we are not telling you what the numbers are and all we are saying is that each letter is a variable values must be distinct that's that's an additional constraint which i am not stating explicitly here that each each variable must get a different value. So, you cannot get the same values because if you have, if you are allowed to give the same values, then all you would do is to uh, give 0 to everything and then you would have a sum. So, what do we mean by saying you would have a sum? There are constraints which I am not writing here, but these are basically says that if these letters were replaced by the numbers, then the sum would be arithmetically correct essentially. So, that whatever I plug in for s and e and n and d and so on, what I will get is a valid sum uh, uh, summation addition problem essentially. So, the basically the task is to find uh, values for that essentially. So, how do you solve this essentially obviously you can see solution for this one is search and you can do a brute force search essentially you can say s is equal to 1 then 2 then 3 and so on and then e is equal to 1 then 2 then 3 I am just writing it in a cryptic manner when you say s is equal to 1 then e cannot cannot be 1 and so on all those things are there and you can just try all combinations and see if actually the sum works out or not essentially. The other approach is by reasoning ok. So, what is the kind of reasoning we can do? We can say that for example, this m must be 1. Why? Because you know that is the only way you can get uh, this value because there are some hidden variables which I have not spoken about, but let me take another example and we can try to illustrate that completely essentially. So, another example is uh, this 6 plus these are interesting because of the fact that the that the English reading of this problem also is quite meaningful essentially. So, when you say send plus send send more money it is like a meaningful sentence or if you say 6 plus 7 plus 7 is 20 then it is a meaningful sentence. So, as I was saying what you need here is some hidden variables. So, there must be something here which we call as carry variables and they may take values of between 0 and 1, but we are not worried about that of course, they will take values like 0, 1 or 2 also in this case but we are not really concerned about it. We want values for these letters 6, s, i, x, s, e, v, e, n and so on, so that the sum is correct. That is the basic constraint which I am not expressing, but that and so let me take one more example and I will try, we will try to solve this as we go along. So, this is e So, let us create uh, uh, placeholders for these where the values will come in. So, we want values for each of these and we are also allowed to have carries for these. So, let us try to solve this online by using a reasoning approach and we try to fill in whatever numbers we can somehow argue. So, just as we said that m must be 1, here we can say that a must be 1 because that is the only way when you when you add t plus p 
you are getting a carry which is coming as a letter A and so therefore, the only carry that you can get by adding 2 integers is 1. So, the maximum you can do is 8 plus 9 is 17 and you cannot go beyond 17. So, the carry will be always 1. So, we know that A is 1 and once we know that A is 1 and we know that this carry is 1 and then we can fill up a value for A 1 here also. So, because wherever there is an A, it must be the same value essentially. Okay. So, now the fact that we added something to T and got a P means that there must have been a carry above that as well. And then what can P be? P can only be 0 essentially, okay. because you are adding 1 to something and you are generating a carry. So, you can only add 1 to 9 to make it a 2 digit number. If you add 1 to 8, you will get 9 and you will not get a carry, so you will not get thing essentially. So, we can figure out that, that P must be 0. So, we fill in 0 here, we fill in 0 here and consequently T must be uh, 9. So, now we know that 1 plus 9 would have got us 10 and then this 1 would have gone carry and that is A there. So, once we know that T is 9, we can fill 9 here, 9, 9 here. And then we know that E must be 8 because 9 plus 9 is 18 and this must be a carry here which is 1. And then we can see that 1 plus A, 1 plus 1, so this must be 3 L and uh, uh, E is 8 here. And 3, gen 3 does not generate a carry, so this carry must be 0. And then we can figure out that uh, um, the only value that H can take is 2 because that will generate a carry. So, this particular problem we managed to solve. So, what is this problem? This problem says that 819 plus 9219 is 10038. So, this is the solution and the problem was eat that apple essentially. Now, in this example what I try to illustrate is the fact that you can use reasoning to arrive at the solution. We did not try out all combinations for values for the different letters. We can do that also and that is another approach to solving this problem essentially. Not only that in this particular example, we could solve the whole problem using reasoning. If we had got stuck on the way for some reason, for somehow if we could not figure out what the next thing is, then we could resort to search as well essentially. So, you can do reasoning part of the way, then search, then so on and so forth essentially. You can see that there are many problems like this. So, uh, Another example is Sudoku. So, typically one expects to do more reasoning on Sudoku and that is the whole exercise of doing the thing. Otherwise, if you just give it to a small computer program, it will solve it in half a second for you essentially. So, the whole thing is that you can combine these two things essentially. So, what I want to do is to give you uh, a few more examples to give you a flavor of the fact that you can model different kinds of things as constraint satisfaction problems. And then after that we will kind of move over to solving CSPs essentially, so algorithms for solving CSPs and algorithms for solving CSPs will be a combination of these kind of things that I am saying search and reasoning. In the language of constraint satisfaction, we do not say reasoning so much, we say propagation essentially. So, there is this whole field called constraint propagation that you can propagate uh, restrictions to other variables and in that process we, we can do that essentially. So, here for example, in this eat that apple example, we started with a restriction on A, the leftmost A in the answer and then we propagated that, that we said because A is 1, T must be 9 and P must be 0 and, and so on and so forth essentially. So, these kind of things we will do essentially. Okay. So, CSP, a CSP problem is basically defined as a triple where x, d and c, where x is a set of variables So, let us say uh, x 1, x 2 up to x n, then d is domains for those same variables. So, there must be d domains, d n domains okay. 
and C is a set of constraints. So, let us say we have some k constraints. where each C i is made up of two things called S i and R i. So, this is basically the formalization of this problem and we will come back to examples soon, where S i is the scope of the ith constraint. And it is basically a subset of x. So, some variables on which the constraint is defined, uh, and Ri is a relation which is a subset of uh, x1 i cross x2 i cross x s. I, I, if you can make sense of this. So, essentially I should say modulus a, 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 S i there. So, if the scope has let us say p variables, so if S i is equal to p, then we are saying that R i is a subset of cross product of x 1 i, x 2 i, x p i essentially, because there is p variable. So, we take the cross product of that and we have the scope of that. So, essentially this is a formulation of a constraint satisfaction problem, uh, where the scope of a constraint tells you how many variables are participating in that constraint and the relation of the, cons the actual constraint is a relation on the variables which are participating in that constraint essentially. Now, we want to look at some, some, some restriction of this very generalized formulation of a CSP or what is the kind of uh, problems that we will address. Uh, but before we come to that, uh, let me define a special class of CSPs which is called a binary CSP. Or B C S P and in binary C S P the basic thing is that scope is less than or equal to 2 for every variable scope is less than or equal to 2 uh, which means that up to 2 variables participate in a constraint. So, very often we will uh, refer to uh, in binary CSPs, we will refer to scopes as follows. Uh, so, for example, we can say S 1 2 or S 3 4. So, what this means is that it is a short form x 3 and x 4 uh, belongs to S 3 4. So, this, this indices of variables we will use directly. Yeah, to do that basically or we can uh, yeah so something like this essentially and the class of binary constraint satisfaction problems is of particular interest because there are is a large number large set of algorithms that have been developed for that so i'll stop here with this uh, lecture and in the next lecture we'll start looking at some more examples of of csp and we will try to restrict the kind of csps that we will address in this course essentially mm -hmm.